Hey guys, my name is Frank. I work for DMC and I like things that go fast. So I'll be showing you how to quickly install Android Studio, make your first app, and test it on a real and virtual device. First step is to download Android Studio. And while downloading that, also download Java JDK. Uh, I picked Java Development Kit 8 and since I am running a 64-bit computer, I'll be downloading Windows X64. If I click right there. So download that guy too and it should download much faster than Android Studio. And once they're both downloaded, click and install the Java Development Kit. So go through the installation procedure for Java. It's important that you install the Java one first. And you can close out of this once you're complete. Next, after installing Java, you install the Android Studio. And make sure you have the SDK, Android Virtual Device, and the Intel HAXM checked off. Agree, 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 read that all, agree, just continue all the way through these guys. And my computer super fast, so look how fast that went. All right, next, finish. Everything should start up and run awesomely. So now you have it all installed and you can start Android Studio. You finish and it will start up and you can start a new Android project. We're gonna make my application, just leave it default, click next. Leave it there since we're just designing a regular application where you're using a like activity is fine for us. Click next. Everything default is okay. Click finish. And now it will be creating the entire development environment for us. Oh, a lot of access for that too. Uh, so now we're ready to go. Except if you got this message, no JVM installation found, go check if you have Java. Type that into your command prompt. Or you can just go check the file path. If indeed you have Java, here's what you're going to have to do. Go to your control panel. Go to the advanced options. Through advanced system settings, advanced there, settings, environmental variables. Uh, you're going to create a new one, system variable called Java Home. And the variable value is location of Java. So we just check that out right here. That's where Java is. Paste that in. Okay, now you should tr start up Android Studio again. It should work. If not, Google around and try to figure it out. All right, we started it up. We had some rendering problems. We'll just drag a layout in here to make it work. Uh, let's pick relative layout. So drag and drop it in. And look at that, hello world. So this app is basically ready to go, but let's take a look around and see what else we can change. So if I go up here, there's some tabs, like mainactivity.java, that contains all the information, and all the logic that's running on the app. Uh, this is the explorer over here. You can go check out the layout that we have. Uh, drawable, these are all sorts of icons and pictures and uh, strings and values. So these are all the things that come together to create the app in the final package. So I'm gonna go back to activity and we're going to go from design to the text layout. So where it said hello world, we're going to make it say something more interesting. Uh, we're going to say hello DMC. So right now it's looking for the string called hello world and displaying that. So we're going to look for the string called hello DMC. And I don't think it's going to be happy because there will be no string called hello DMC. Because we just make, so we're going to have to make one of those and make it say hello DMC. So we can't find it. So we're going to go to our strings and say, oh, oh look, it's looking for hello world. We're going to switch that to hello DMC. And we're going to make that say hello DMC. So now we go check it back on the design tab or still in text tab. It says hello DMC and we're going to make it interesting too. We're going to throw a, a DMC image in here too. So I just copy and paste it into the drawables folder and everything's fine. And now I'll go back to the layout, expand it out so you can see all the drag and droppable options. So when you're looking at the design view, you have all these options you can drag and drop in. So I'm going to pick uh, image view. I'll drag and drop that guy in. So this will let us put a picture in there and you have to select which picture is displayed so I'll click that guy and tell the source and we just copied and pasted in that DMC uh, picture so I'll go search for that. It's, at the, it's in the drawables folder so there we go drawables scroll down and there's DMC. So hit OK and look at that we got a picture and some custom text and now we have a cool custom app and let's go run it. But first, let's make sure it's running on a virtual device. And by default, this is a virtual device. You can change the settings on here if you want to, but this guy works fine. Uh, all right, so we'll hit OK, since this is fine for us. And we will run it. So I'll just click that little bug there. That stands for debug. And it starts up. It will take much fast, much more time than this, since I have it all sped up on my end. So you run it, and I'll have to swipe up to uh, unlock it just like any Android device and if you're impatient like me you'll just click the play button again or something but it will start up on its own 
Let's see, yeah. And oh, it's still going. Okay. And look at that. The app is running. So now I have it on here. But in case it didn't start on your end, you probably have a problem with that Intel accelerator. Go make sure it's installed. So this is the Android SDK manager. If it's not installed, go install it, figure out how to do that. If you're running not in an Intel chip, you're gonna have to figure out something else. So just make a different Android virtual device for yourself that works better. And what would be debugging without doing it on an actual device? So here's my phone. Uh, you're gonna have to turn on developers options. So you have to click the about phone in settings, go down to the build number, tap it, I think five times. It will say build developer options available now. So now I go back to your settings, you have developer options and you wanna check off USB debugging. So that means whenever you plug your cable in, you can uh, connect to your development environment and send applications over to it. So I'm going to try that. I turned on developer mode and enabled USB debugging. I'm plugging it in now. And if we try to debug the app, let's see. Actually, first we have to go make sure it runs on the USB device. So we're switching that over. And let's try it. Debug. And you can check all the outputs down here in the window. I'll make it bigger. So it's running through a building and all. It built it. Now it's going to send it over to the device. And what's that? We have a problem. USB device not found. You guys can't read that. And I'll just let you see this. But it can't find it, anything. There's no USB connected, even though I thought I did. The reason is we don't have the proper drivers. So we're going to have to install the Google USB debugging driver. So let's go over to tools. Actually, no, it was uh, AVD manager. Nope, SDK manager. Click on that guy and scroll down to the bottom of this you'll see there's an option to install Google USB driver install that and make sure you check off the agree and accept everything they're telling you read through everything really quick because we like fast stuff okay and you can install it and it installs super fast on my computer at least and all right done so now, if I try to run it, it will run only if my computer has the drivers for the phone and it doesn't, so it won't work again. So what I need to do is install the drivers for my phone and I have a Motorola phone, so I need to search for Motorola ADB and I'll show you the reason why my computer will not recognize my phone still. If you go to your um, device manager, you'll see that my computer isn't recognizing my phone. There's no ADB interface for it, so I search Motorola ADB, download it from the Motorola site, and I'm gonna install it. So this is so my Motorola phone has a driver on the computer and I can talk to it. So you go through whatever phone you have and read through everything, accept everything, just go through the installation process for your phone. So search your phone plus ADB on Google and install whatever it is. All right, try it again. Plug my phone in and it should recognize it now and actually ask me if I'm okay with this computer. So I'll say, yeah, I wanna enable debugging on this computer. I wanna recognize it, so hit okay. So now my phone is connected to the computer. They're both talking, they're both happy. I was try debugging again, send this app over to the phone and it will, will probably work. And here we go. I'll just turn my screen on my phone so you can see it start up. And here comes the app. Look at that. The app is on my phone. So this app is now on my phone and on the virtual device. But if I close out of it, you can still start it up again. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, this app we made is just like any other app on your Android device. You can start it up just by swiping through all your apps and finding it. So remember we called it My Application. So I'll start it up on the virtual device here. You just bring up the apps you have and try to find My Application. There it is, you start it up and there you go. So now you have your first app set up and your Android Studio ready to go to make any app. So go try stuff out.